I'm sure there we go. Yeah. this summer. Well, I'm talking about six or eight. Yep. Beverly said she's on vacation. So she Rogers? Yeah. She's a great addition. She is. She has a lot of wisdom. So. Cool. Well, you know, Hagee before I left, and I tell you, don't talk about somebody with wisdom. Who's that? John Hagee. Oh, yeah. That man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You scare the tar out of you. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> uh, well, yesterday was Cheryl's birthday. Yep. I'm and then Chrissy's birthday right was today. Chrissy oh, yeah, your friend? Yeah. Uh -huh. She said she was going to watch online. So. She told us that last week. Yeah. She did. Yep. Was Happy birthday, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's, she may be watching. All right. Um, okay. Well, you, this is your first time. Yes. So I'm going to give, we every first of every week, we do a verse of the week. Okay. So you can put it in your Bible or in a book you're reading. They're about okay. bookmark size. Or on your mirror or in your car, blah, blah, blah. And I have extras past Bible verses too. So, right. anyway, awesome. and then here's our Bible study schedule. Um, you don't need one, do you, Cheryl? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. self-driving cars. <laughs> There's a chip in it. My, my car knows how to get yeah. to the nearest Starbucks. I was about to say, Starbucks. you know what, that's next. People program their car to where to oh, take yeah. them. That would be the next car. They're working on it, but I don't know if they'll get there or not. <laughs> I would wait till everything is. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the next thing we usually do is introduce each other. I think we know each other. We know each other. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl of Albany, Catherine of Albany, <laughs> McCain of... <laughs> This area. A shell of sure, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so every week we do an icebreaker because sometimes we have new people and we don't all know each other. Maybe we kind of do, but mm -hmm. it's just how we get to know each other better and it relaxes everyone. So, the icebreaker question this week if you get here before nine, which Cheryl, I think you did, but I forgot to tell you. Is everyone said, McKay, you always know the question, so it's unfair because you know the answer to the icebreaker question because you sometimes you don't think about it. So if you get here on time at 9 a.m. or mm -hmm. before, I give you the icebreaker question oh. so you have time to think about it. Oh, okay. right. And the icebreaker question is do you collect anything? Yes, Barbies. Barbies! There you go. <gasps> Wow! I love, dolls. I love dolls. What's what's the most interesting Barbie that you have in your collection? Um, I would have to say because uh, when I was little, my mother used to watch all my children. It was a soap opera, right. very famous soap opera. Right. I have an Erica Kane Barbie. <laughs> That's amazing. And my Scarlett O'Hara's. I love my Scarlett's. So, what's probably your most valuable? If you were to put it on like eBay or um, something, it would probably be the Bob Mackey. He's a designer, I'm sure you know that. Um, but anyway, it's it's one of his gowns on a Barbie, and she has purple hair, purple oh, hair. Yeah. It's cool. Anyway, it's it's very very chic. Wow. <laughs> um, not as many as my friend who has an entire like you know how you have a turret at your house. Mm -hmm. She has one in Dublin at her dad's old house. In Yellowstone's oh my God. <laughs> but mine, I, I probably have 20. Wow. Yes. And Cody hates me. <laughs> I can't I, imagine why. Yeah, I just have him in the bedroom and he's like, I'm not going to bed with these man. With 20 Barbies staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that's what I mean. <laughs> and uh, Cheryl? Antique stuff. Antique Just stuff. Anything? anything. And John. Plus and John. Yeah. By my kids, it's John. Does that make sense to you? Well, uh, and you know, I'm like that too because I find a good antique and, mm -hmm. and I, I, but see, like, I have a, I got it oh, two years ago. It's an actual wooden coffee grinder. And you know, when you have the wood, like, pieces that fit, mm -hmm. you can tell that it's old, it's dirt, right. like when you look at your dressers and stuff right. like that, but it actually grinds coffee and you pull it out of the little wooden box. And I think it's dovetail. Wow. That was what I call my doomsday prepper. <laughs> your doomsday. <laughs> I'm like, that's I'm already. No, that's my husband who's been getting his truck. I'm always telling him he's doomsday prepping because his truck's full of junk. Food. Junk food. Food. Junk food. Junk food. Junk food. Junk food. He collects junk food. <laughs> <laughs> he collects truck for a year for all food. I'll say, so I feel like mine's more of a confessional than a collection. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've always had a fascination with just all sorts of magazines from everything mm -hmm. from Entertainment Weekly to business magazines to coastal living. To, so I have tons of magazines under my bed and on my shelves and I, they start to pack up because then I order like a two year subscription and before long I just, mm -hmm. they keep making great deals. So mm -hmm. I, two of more course, years, of course. <laughs> now, whether I get around to reading them, is an, I could sit there and read them every day if I uh -huh. had time. Yeah. So I collect magazines and I cannot bring myself to throw them away. <laughs> wow, I have some old New Yorkers from 1960. See, and I have New Yorkers too. And then if they throw in a free magnet for resubscribing or yeah, whatever, then I'm done. It. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what I can. I started laughing when I saw the question because I've been going through this <laughs> conviction about all my magazines. It's all good. So, anyways, that one's mine, and I think it makes me feel connected to the greater world. I don't know. I don't yeah, know why. I, I there's like that, a subconscious I reason I love magazines. When you're stuck in Albany and there's that big great world out there that I used to be a part of, and you know, <laughs> I get. You. <laughs> it's out there. Well, does Facebook not count? <laughs> that, that's, my, that's my only. That's my only outer thing. That and Twitter, you know. Twitter. <laughs> and then they just do all this Trump bashing, so I got to get off Twitter. Right. Because it's gonna a, kick me off. Listen, like Twitter to doing. me is a lot of it's so toxic. Like I get on there, it's all politically Very charged. Political. Everybody's negative. Negative. Anything you post, people, it's just like, I, I don't even I don't get on there very much anymore. Because no, because it's become. Reason. Just declaring different blessings okay and I've been doing this for several years and I love it because oh you have one you don't need that. Um, every morning I, I just speak these blessings you know? money. right yeah. right <laughs> and it's funny because when Bible party Bible study first started everybody's like this is so weird it's kind of different yeah. and uh, Shortly after that, I was on YouTube watch, listening to worship music, and my brother's church up in Redding, California comes on. They start doing something almost identical to this in their church. Truth? Service. Yes. And I was just like, my jaw nearly hit the floor. Wow. And so it was kind of a God way thing, because it was like, okay. So anyways, we've seen God answer. It's kind of like a prayer in a way, because we've seen yes. God do things in our lives personally. We've had testimonies. So... All that to say, we read this out loud every week at the first of Bible study. Okay. And so, um, the verse I like to use, just kind of some scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, and I'll read it to you real quick.
enemy wants us to have a poverty and lack mentality yes and and he doesn't want us advancing in god's kingdom he doesn't want us advancing in life and so this is kind of our charging forward in life thing. Right. i don't know so i just I, when i got a hold of this it just really helped me well so. you have to claim right. you have to speak right speak it speak it right and that's what this is doing and if you're not speaking it then you're not right you know right it's, it's not going to come to pass so yes right. i believe in that right wholeheartedly right so we're going to read this together okay this whole thing? yeah okay so y'all ready yes okay as we plant our seed in faith, we trust the Word of God and believe that when we sow to the Spirit, we will reap from the Spirit. We sow our seed in faith, believing for the spiritual and natural fruit of increase and multiplication. Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, new business and accounts, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, finding money, debts paid off, forgiven, Put it on your everybody in my household. Well, put it on your refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah, take that home. The more you speak it, the more That's you right. It gets it. ingrained in you yes. also. Yes. And what you're doing, the more you declare it, it's releasing faith for that to happen. Mm -hmm. yes, and so you so. It, you have not because you ask not. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so But people don't understand that. They just right. say, Dear God, I'll give you money. And right. Then what's to come? Right. No. You're not even going to him the right, right way. You right. Know? So right. that's just So we, we do this every week. Okay. Anyway, thought you'd enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> I did. So, anyway, well. Favorable settlements, maybe hopefully Kimberly's disability will Right, be. right. Mm -hmm. we'll, we can talk about it. We'll pray today yes. over all of that. Well, it's at the Supreme Court, finally, so. Wow. Yeah. I guess our live is gone. We had a viewer a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, I, I wanted to start doing this because there's people that follow stuff online yeah. that fit. There you go. <laughs> Meant to be. <laughs> right. My granddad used to have a, a picture beside his recliner chair that said, "A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone whose life who isn't." Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, sometimes. I but <laughs> so to say that sometimes, <laughs> it's a great thought. No, it's, uh, the more, the more right. I see this, the more the devil. Right. My mother used to tell me I was. Hi, Shelly. Shelly's on. Hi, Shelly Barty. Hi, Shelly. Oh, wave. We'll wave at her. Oh, she's. Because <laughs> so she's cute. been wanting to come. So. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I'm going to tell you, because I think both of you understand spiritual attacks, like when you step out to do things for God, the enemy will tr mm -hmm. he'll come against your thought life. Mm -hmm. I had a really hard day yesterday just because I was filming a Word of the Week. I knew I was bringing the camera today and that mm -hmm. people would see stuff online. And I'm about to do my summer newsletter. I'm, I'm a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. And so all those things are obviously to help encourage people in their faith. And I'm telling you just... 
I had issues with my car door and that fix turned out to be very expensive. It's just like one setback after another after another. Mm -hmm. But I know it's the enemy. Like That's right. and I'm fighting these thoughts all like in my weakness, I'm fighting these thoughts that well maybe God's not for me or he's just allowing the devil to do this. And I'm really having to you I mean, you know when everything's going wrong, you really you some struggle and yes. it's like but I know that there's a breakthrough. You know, I used to say to a friend, uh, and I hate to say it sometimes, but it's almost like the breakdown before the breakthrough, it feels like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't like to make that the standard because I believe we don't have to have the breakdown to get a breakthrough. No. But no. it does sometimes tend to happen that way. So, it I don't does. know. I it just, does. You just have to stand firm through it and keep your right. faith. Right. right. Anyway, I don't know. I felt like sharing that. But yesterday was a hard day. And I think, Cheryl, you were saying, Birthdays are always very mixed for me. I don't know if they are for you. I just go with it. Whatever. Right. right. That 25, that's Oh! <laughs> 25! <laughs> you know, I thought it was 24, but yeah, you know, you're you aging mean. gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Shelly is watching. Yes, she, she is. Birthday, yes, she is. Oh, happy birthday, Shelly. She's yeah. a lot older than me, though. Ah! <laughs> Shelly, you're not 25. Oh, so she's 26. <laughs> happy 26, <laughs> Shelly, if you can hear me. <laughs> she's probably like, how do I? Anyway. Um, anyway. But, you know, it's funny you're talking about age because Brian Chapman and I played Little League Baseball together. And we were on the same Little League team. So the last time I remember him was when we were like 10. Wow. And then two weeks ago, I spoke. I was at Maranatha Fellowship, and he showed up. And I guess he was in from Temple. And it was like the adult version of Brian. I was like, here's the 10-year-old Brian. The yeah. adult yeah. version. I was like, whoa. And I knew it was him because his yeah. mannerisms and just how he is. Isn't wow. that funny? It was just like, anyway, talking about age. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to pray over Proverbs 20, and we're just going to go verse by verse. Sound okay. good? Okay. All right. Father God, I just thank you so much this morning. I thank you, Father, for your word that you have given us. You've given us your Holy Spirit to help us in life. And you've given us our word, which is your promise to us, that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. And when life gets hard, God, we can always go back to the scriptures. So I just pray, Lord, as we read Proverbs chapter 20, highlight different verses that stand out um, that we can practice in our lives to just make life better the way you designed it to be. So I thank you for Catherine being here this morning. I, she's such a blessing. And thank you for Cheryl for being here, just so faithful um, to show up even after the day after her birthday. And we just pray over everyone that couldn't make it today, people on vacation or just had work or whatever. Um, we just pray a special blessing over them, and I pray a blessing over everyone watching and listening online, Father, that you would just speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So this is going to be different than some of our other chapters because it's not telling a story. It's like little, little fortune cookies. <laughs> some, are, some are great, and some are like, oh, that's a tough one. So, okay? So at the end, just... Talk about different verses. We'll just talk about different verses. That okay. there's a lot of yeah, you know Proverbs. It's the deep thoughts, right? Okay, so Proverbs chapter twenty. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is intoxicated by it is not wise. The terror of a king is like the growling of a lion. He who provokes him to anger forfeits his own life. Keeping away from strife is an honor for a man but any fool will quarrel. The slugger does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. A plan in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding draws it out. Many a man proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy man? A righteous man who walks in his integrity, how blessed are his sons after him. A king who sits on the throne of justice disperses all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have cleansed my heart, I am pure from my sin? Differing weights and differing measures, 
both of them are abominable to the Lord. It is by his deeds that a lad distinguishes himself if his conduct is pure and right. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made both of them. Do not love sleep or you'll become poor. Open your eyes and you'll be satisfied with food. Bad, bad, says the buyer, but when he goes his way, then he boasts. There is gold and an abundance of jewels, but the lips of knowledge are a more precious thing. Take his garment when he becomes surety for a stranger and for foreigners, hold him in pledge. Bread obtained by falsehood is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Prepare plans by consultation and make war by wise guidance. He who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a gossip. He who curses his father or his mother, his lamp will go out in time of darkness. An inheritance gained hurriedly at the beginning will not be blessed in the end. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord and he will save you. Differing weights are an abomination to the Lord, and a false scale is not good. Man's steps are ordained by the Lord. How then can a man understand his way? It is a trap for a man to say rashly, it is holy, after the vows to make inquiry. A wise king winnows the wicked and drives the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. Loyalty and truth preserve the king, and he upholds his throne by righteousness. The glory of young men is their strength, and the honor of old men is their gray hair. Stripes that wound scour away evil, and strokes reach the innermost parts. A lot of different stuff there. Really? A lot. <laughs> Tossing a lot out there. <laughs> so, Saul, this is King Solomon, and of course, he was known for his tremendous wisdom that God gave him. And. Um, I know a couple that I have underlined is verse 3 it says keeping away from strife is an honor to a man but any fool will quarrel so in life it's easy to get caught up in fights mm -hmm. but the Bible says when we when it's in our power it's not saying we shouldn't address issues you know what I mean there's a difference but I know sometimes we have to back away and the Lord says there's actual reward it says Keeping away from strife is an honor for a person. And so there's times when we need to walk away when it's easy to just fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So anyway, so that's one thing I have underlined. And then the other one is verse 22 that says, Do not say I will repay evil. In other words, don't take matters into your own hands. Wait for the Lord and he will save you.
speaking to me. Right. You know, don't don't get that way. <laughs> right. Right. And the and the the pool, the pool is quick to pour. You know, my right. mom always used to tell me too. My you know, grandchildren told me my tongue was my weapon. <laughs> right. Because it's quick to. Right. So that's something I definitely try to change. Right. Right. And it's hard. Right. Cheryl, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm trying to find the one that jumped out. I was uh, basically that gossip. I think. Like this one too, 29. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. The glory of young men is their strength, and the honor of old men is their great hair. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yep. It's all just, well, they're Proverbs. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay, now, but what does this, what does this one mean? I was confused about. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil, and beatings purge the innermost being. It's talking about being disciplined. That's the very last one. It's a Verse thirty. It's yeah, talking I about. I still haven't got my glasses yet. It's it's talking about uh, being disciplined. Whenever today. you, of course, today we don't beat people with rods and that sort of thing. Well, should it? But it's talking about being disciplined. You know. I, the way things were handled then were very different than now. Right, but you know, like beatings purged. And, and, and I think it's an expression also. Because, I mean, it's like spare the rod, spoil the child. Right, that's. many changes with oh, not living by this word. Hi, Rhonda. Oh, I mean, they tell you now if you spank your kid, oh, we're going to call CPS. You know, it, it's sad. It's sad. Right. It's, yeah. Here's a good one. And don't get started on liberals, so we'll never get out. <laughs> Here's number, thir number 13. Let's see. Do not love sleep or you'll become poor. Open your eyes and you'll be satisfied. <laughs> I, I, I marked that one. Right. Well, especially right. in the days when people don't really want to work. Well, don't want to work. Know, right. Like right. And that implies that there's opportunity if you'll open your eyes no matter where you are.
people. Mm -hmm. Certain people, it's easier to talk to. Have you ever noticed that? Like things yes. Yes. bubble out easier, and that's just. Well, and there's some. You, you and then there's some. The it's, right. It's just interesting. So. This one's good too because I'm guilty of this. Do not say I will pay you back for this wrong. Right. <laughs> Wait for the Lord and He will right. deliver you. Right. Yeah. Right. That one's tough. That one's tough. Right. That's steep. And I never really thought about that as to when I take matters in my own hands that I'm totally saying I'm not trusting the Lord. Right. Right. I'm not waiting on you. Right. And that's wrong. Right. That's wrong. And right. I just came to that realization right. through that verse. Any last, let's see, applications, oh, there's a lot of good stuff. You know, the stripes that wound, that reminds me, the very last verse, reminds me of Jesus and he taking our beating. deep thoughts there. <laughs> well, because in the marketplace then they use yes. scales to weigh out and you paid them and so if you were cheating by messing up the scales right. you were wronging people. Right. So it's defrauding people in business basically. Right.
three week. So anyway, and um, so uh, ever in our list sometimes tends to be getting longer lately. <laughs> so last week we prayed for uh, Jamie and Colby, uh, Becky, Kelby. I mean, so they were looking into foster care type stuff. So we prayed over Becky and over the family, and then I think Hunter was in on missions in Uganda. So we prayed over that. We prayed over Sierra's band. Um, she had lost a lead guitarist. Got one. Got one. See, there you go. Got a new lead guitarist. Prayer answered. So that's a praise report. Sierra's band. Got a lead guitar. with his business, picking up, we've been praying over that, and Chrissy, she works at Abilene High, has had a rough few years, and so we're praying for the schools, uh-huh, the school system, and Dustin, a guy that has a night show at KGNZ, I just want, we prayed over his ministry, because he reaches a lot of people, his name's Dustin, Dustin Tatro, I think I said it right, anyway, but he reaches a lot of people, so we pray over him. And then I think Chrissy said she had a teaching class workshop. So anyway, um, that's from last week. That we prayed over. So this week, any prayer requests and or praise? Okay. For her stuff to come through and her help. Pacing myself and getting everything done. It's between, yeah, yeah um, getting this newsletter out. Normally I have it out about right now, so mm -hmm. a little behind. But that's okay. That's God's okay. timing. God's timing. Preparing hearts. Right. So, but I still have to finish writing it, so I don't know that next day. <laughs> so just the, uh, the summer newsletter. So, and every. I send them out quarterly, and it seems like every quarter the list gets a little longer. So that's awesome. I just um, anyway. Uh, and, and I say always let's pray for our president. Yeah. Come on, man. Can't do anything right. Right. Raise eyes, and it just kills me. But, but he's proven them wrong. Uh, <laughs>
Praise reports. Father God, I just thank you so much this morning um, for Bible study um, and just for, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. Um, Father, you said uh, that in this world we would have troubles, but to take heart that you have overcome the world. And so um, that's our faith, Father, in you is that we are going to overcome. And so, Lord, we just praise you for the victory that's coming. We praise you, God, for the breakthroughs that are on the way. Um, even when we can't see it, sometimes in our darkest hour, that's when the light comes bursting forth. And so, Lord, um, help us to stay in faith, to stand on your word. And, um, Father, we just praise you because um, you hear us every week when we bring these prayers to you. Um, even with Sierra praying for a new lead guitarist, found someone. Lord, I just thank you. You're connecting the right people in her life. And um, I thank you, Lord, that even bringing Catherine here this week, um, just every week you're doing a new thing, Father. And so what, I just praise you, Lord, um, that you're in the big things, but you're also in the small things, Father. And so we just worship you and thank you and praise you that, that you care for us, even um, you care about the small things in our life. You, you obviously care about the big things in our life. So, Lord, help us to just stay in faith that you have everything in your control and in the palm of your hand. And, Father, we just lift up um, Catherine's daughter, Kimmy, to you, Father, just with her disability, with her health, with um, the aid, financial aid and all that sort of thing, Father, that you're in the details. So I just pray over Kimmy that you give her peace of mind, give Catherine peace of mind, Father, and that you're working everything out for their good, just the way it needs to be. And so I just thank you in advance for answering that prayer, Father. And Lord, I pray over the summer newsletter as I compose it, Father, that you would give me the words to say for everyone that's going to read it, that it would speak to their hearts with whatever they're going through. So I thank you for that. I pray for our president. Lord, that you'd give him sound wisdom as he's making decisions around the clock um, on our behalf for this country and things that are going to impact the world for generations to come. So give him wisdom and understanding, Lord. And I pray for Autumn in California, Father, that he would just uh, get her eyes on you, Jesus. And I know the culture there and what it's like. And so I just pray, Lord, that you would help her to uh, stay grounded in her faith, to stay grounded in wisdom, and no matter what she's around, even on a daily basis, just um, keep her value system strong, Father, and use her as an instrument and as a vessel of light in the people around her for your glory, God. And we pray for Jake, Father, and for his mental health and for purpose and um, and just what he's dealing with. And we pray for Sissy, that you would give her wisdom as well, Father, that um, you would just pour out your spirit on that family and just um, give them guidance and just be with them, Lord, as they're um, dealing with different things, Father. And Lord, I just thank you for this morning, for the book of Proverbs, just so much wisdom. Lord, just remind us of different verses as we go about our week this week. 
um, things that apply and can help us in life, to help us to live the abundant life. Like you say in John 10, 10, that you gave us kind, Jesus, you came to give us life and give it abundantly. So thank you, Lord.